Hello, beloved of the Lord. It is Friday, October 19th, 2018. A blessed Yom Kippur to you all, if my understanding of things is correct. So I wanted to just give you a little update. Things are transpiring. I would just like to share a praise report to start with. My daughter, the one that sent me those difficult texts a couple of weeks ago, called this week or texted me and asked if I would like to take my grandson this week. And I was able to talk with her and we are fully reconciled as as far as I understand, <laughs> she gave me lots of hugs and I said, you know, I'll always be sorry for everything I've done wrong. And she seemed to be able to receive that. And, uh, and I had a lovely time with my grandson and then took him home in the evening. So that was wonderful. Thank you all for your prayers. I know that some of you have expressed that you have been praying for us and I, I just really appreciate that. And um, all those who have made encouraging comments and I just want you to know that I really, really appreciate you and your comments and your prayers. So I love you very much. All right, um, so I spoke to you on what I believe was Rosh Hashanah about the 10 days between then and Yom Kippur. And I would like to specifically talk about um, the 10 days in the Bible, which was a time of tribulation for Smyrna, the church at Smyrna. That's in Revelation 2, 8 to 11. And the Lord said, if you are faithful unto death, you will receive a crown of life. So if my husband or I or both of us are part of that Church of Smyrna, we did definitely go through a difficult trial. And uh, it has been 10 days, and especially my husband is really still, still having, um, his soul is still afflicted. Um, I want to mention that Yom Kippur is a day to afflict the soul until the evening when the, the Lord passes judgment and they look forward to um, the atonement for their sins and, and his forgiveness. So we're looking forward to that. Um, other, day, other names for Yom Kippur are the Day of Atonement. And it's also, um, according to Jewish sources, uh, the day the bride's veil is lifted. So that's also very interesting. I would just like to share now a little bit of what the Lord has been doing with me personally just in the last two days. Yesterday, he had me doing a study on redemption, but he was bringing verse after verse after verse. I do not have time to run through them all right now, but I may do a separate video on that if I feel led to do that later. Um, so that was yesterday, and then last night, uh, when my husband was uh, saying grace at dinner, I just felt this wonderful, I don't know how to describe it, it's like the Holy Spirit, but it was different from anything I've experienced before. Just very, very, very sweet, very, very like, like living water, if I had to describe it. Um, I just call those experiences like it was a spiritual kiss. It was just an encouragement to me from the Lord. And I know um, the Lord gives those to all of us and, and I'm, we're all grateful when they happen. But I did want to share early this morning, for some reason I was up quite early and I took my dog out uh, to do his business outside uh, at about 5.30. And I was looking up into the sky and it was so clear and the stars were so bright. And, um, and I was just looking at them, pondering and contemplating. And then I was looking for, at first I thought I saw the Big Dipper in a, an unusual place, but then I turned around and I saw it in, in its 
proper place as far as I know. I don't know a whole lot about the stars. But as I was looking up into the sky, suddenly I saw a shooting star. And that is very rare for me because I will get up and I will try to see shooting stars um, when there's a meteor shower sometimes and I hardly ever see shooting stars. But this morning, as I looked up into the sky, it was right in the center of my vision and I just saw it go across. I thought, Lord, something. You're, you're saying something. So I did look up the meaning of shooting stars and um, a lot of, of what I, I read through speaks of uh, a change uh, coming into your destiny, um, things like that. Uh, even uh, one of them spoke about, uh, you know, that um, things, the fairy tale ending uh, will come to pass kind of thing. And they gave the example of, of um, you know, that your coach wouldn't turn into a pumpkin and the prince would whisk you away and you would live happily ever after. And um, I'll just share a quick little story because it relates to that. Uh, years ago, I think it was 2010, uh, I was at a conference and a friend of mine was uh, cooking the meals for 200 people at that conference and my husband was there helping her. Um, I was attending the conference so I said that I would come into the kitchen and do whatever I could when I was on breaks and, and things. So uh, I had come into the kitchen and at the very back corner they had a row of very huge sinks and um, there were all these dishes piled up that had everything baked on them and, and they were uh, needing to be everything scraped into the garbage and then the initial cleaning uh, was taking place there. So that's what I was doing. I was just, uh, you know, scrubbing the pots. And, um, and uh, so what happened was the leaders of the conference came in and started to, you know, speak to my friend and my husband and go around the kitchen and smell everything and ooh and awe. Ah. Can you wait just one minute, please? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so that's why I need to make it short. But uh, they came in, you know, to see what was going on and everything. And they went around to most of the kitchen and said hi to most of the people. And I was in the back corner and this thought just went through my head. And I said, uh, um, the thought that went through my head was just, the, oh, don't, don't mind me. I'm just the washerwoman. <laughs> and I wasn't being grudgy, begrudging that or anything. Um, it was like, you know, I'm just the washerwoman. Don't really pay any attention. Nothing to see here. <laughs> and then immediately after that, I heard uh, the Lord say, no, you're not. You're Cinderella. <laughs> I was like, oh, you mean I don't have to scrub pots for the rest of my life? <laughs> So anyway, that related to, to uh, that interpretation of a shooting star. So I thought I would just mention that. All right. And then uh, I came back in because I had gotten up early. I wanted to do a bit of research. And I had a couple of notifications for YouTube. And I don't normally get notifications from um, Assembly of Called Out Believers, which I've mentioned before. Uh, but there was a notification there. Interestingly, the uh, the Haftarah, so it was a, a portion of reading, uh, a sermon, and it was from like August or September this year, and for some reason they had just published it on the 17th, and for some reason it came up in my notifications. Would you like to guess what the Haftarah portion portion was about. Okay. I'll tell you. It is Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 22. And just as a side note, the number 22 is the number of light. Light. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples. 
but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. The riches of the nations will come. And it goes on and on and on about redemption. So we have a theme of redemption. And uh, I will just be looking to the Lord and asking him that I would be able to perceive what he is doing today. And, uh, and I look forward to his redemption, his atonement. So I just wanted to share those few things and uh, ask the Lord to bless you today and uh, bless us all as we move into something new in him. Okay, love you very much. Talk to you soon.